it with uh you know the the platform that i've sorry i just took a shower so i'm i'm you know the hair's all messed up um 13.6 thousand hey what's up everyone um it's so great to see you and talk to you i feel like it's been forever i feel like i should start by saying happy new year um you know all of those things um but also like happy new year like actual uh solar new year because we we haven't really talked since then um hi first of all addressing the elephant in the room yeah i'm i'm blonde i know um uh uh, uh many of you have been very vocal about your um um dislike for the blonde hair and um i just i just want you to know um i don't care because i feel like i'm living my best life and uh i actually really 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 love it um it took 8 hours which is a really, really long time. Sorry, my computer keeps... My computer is like my whole lighting setup. There we go. There we go. Hey! Um, and, uh, and you know, um, and it was worth it. It was worth it. I've had the same haircut for like, uh, like my entire life, basically. And so this is, this is cool. It's um, definitely something I've wanted to do since I was a, a child. So... You know me, I'm all about uh, fulfilling childhood dreams at a very advanced age. Um, so yeah, who says the 90s, uh, said the 90s ever left? I'm bringing them back. Um, what made you dye your hair blonde? I'm reading one of the, one of the comments. Um, it's a wonderful question. Uh, part of it was I just felt like it. Part of it was uh, something maybe work-related that I'll, I'll share with you later. But, um, yeah, I, um, uh, there's a lot of people saying that they do like the hair. Well, I appreciate that. You know, sometimes when we're online on the phones, um, we gravitate to the negative and it's just great to have, uh, so many positive people in this chat. 10.6 thousand. Yeah. 10.6 thousand of you guys to be, to be exact. Um, so, so thank you. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you guys about, if you'll let me, uh, something that's very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I know you've probably seen me post about it on Instagram, on the main feed, but I just thought if, you, you know, if you've got some time, I'd love to share with you a little bit about this book, uh, you know, how it came to be and, and why it means so much to me. And um, I mean, you know, first and foremost, this book is is my whole entire soul. It's the story of where I came from and where my parents came from and um you know is is the story of our immigrant family's journey from Harbin all the way to Kingston, Ontario, all the way to uh, Mississauga where they now live and and um and my journeys and trials and tribulations growing up um and and going to school and uh you know, I guess struggling a little bit to find my way and and um, find my way around things, and then and then, you know, ultimately um, making the decision to be uh, an actor or to give the whole acting thing a try. Um, still don't know how I did that, but um, you know, it, it takes us through a, a, a lot of my life, my parents' lives, and it, it means so much to me because I, I just feel like you know, in talking to so many of you guys. Um, you know, everybody wants to know where they came from. Everyone grows up with these questions of identity. And um, and it, it, it was just really cool to be able to tell the story and to be able to sit down with my parents and to interview them and to really step by step understand where they came from, why they decided to, you know, want to come to Canada, what drove them, what obstacles did they face, um, you know, all of those things. So anyway, I put the pre-order link um in the in the chat it's pinned um there's there's no pressure but um you know i would i would love for you to pre-order the book i would love for you to you know um share in the story that that we have to tell and um you know i know i'm a little bit young to to have a memoir and and you know it's not really a memoir it's it's kind of like a whole family history or whatever have you anyway um this is this is it. Well, this is a, a prototype, so it's still kind of like you know, it's it's still figuring itself out. But for the most part, this is this is what it is. It's called "We Were Dreamers: 
uh, an immigrant superhero origin story. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously backwards, so you can't read it. But um, this is, this is my whole heart and soul and story um, all, all in one. And, and if you've, you know, more than just like a curiosity about me, if you've ever been curious about, you know, the immigrant story and, and the struggles that immigrants faced, um, you know, I think this is, this is really uh, going to be quite good. So, so yeah, anyway, that's that. Um, Taylor Jenkins Reid just signed in, which is pretty awesome because um, I'm her biggest fan and we just made a movie together and that's incredible. Um, read your favorite part. I, I really wanted to, um, but I have, I have a team of, of agents and publishers and publicists that um, don't, don't want me to do that quite yet. So um, stay tuned because I, I totally will. But in the meantime, um, yeah, please, if you would, if you would consider giving this a pre-order, the link is, is right there. Um, you know, it's been a dream of mine, uh, almost for as long as I've wanted to be an actor, maybe, maybe even longer, um, to be a New York Times bestselling author. So, you know, the list is something that I've always had in my head and kind of the way that the, the sales data works with the, with the list calculations and everything is that all the pre-orders, um, will count towards your first week of sales. So generally that first week is when, you know, we want all, you know, all of the traffic and the, and the eyeballs to be focused. So, you know, the more pre-orders we get, the better chance we have of, of hitting the bestseller list. So that's a very selfish reason. Of course, it has nothing to do with you, but I thought I'd share it. It's a personal goal of mine. Um, so, so yeah. Um, a, a couple of you have been asking me how long I've been, I've been writing the book for. I've actually, I started it in about um, the, the fall of 2019, uh, right around the time I, I got cast as, as Shang-Chi. Um, Actually, I had sold the book before I had gotten the role, and um, it was you know HarperCollins Canada. It was kind of this this you know very inspirational immigrant story, but it sort of had no ending. Um, but even then, they were like, "Oh, this is a really cool idea." And then I booked the movie, and everything changed. And the publisher was like, "Holy crap, we have something incredible on our hands! You need to write this whole book with the with the new ending and and just what has just happened to you." And, and all that stuff. And so we reworked it. We got a worldwide publishing deal. And, um, and you know, that moment where you realize that that one small thing that you had is just turned into like a gigantic monstrous uh, thing that you like feel like you have no control over anymore. That was definitely me. But, um, you know, that being said, I, I really, I took it day by day and I kind of wrote it while I was in Australia, the bulk of it anyway, while I was in Australia shooting uh, the movie. And then, you know, after I finished, we, there were like tweaks and, and rewrites and things like that. But um, the bulk of it happened in, in, during the year 2020. And a lot of it happened when we were actually shut down. So, um, you know, tried to make the best of an unfortunate situation um, by, by being as productive as I could be. And uh, the result is, is this. I'm getting a couple of people saying that the more that they look at the hair, the more they like it, which I think is um, just totally a thing. It's like... I understand it was shocking to see this um, at first, but, you know, um, I can feel it. I can feel it starting to grow on you. You, yes, you there watching on your screen. Um, I, I know you maybe were skeptical at first, but now you're looking at it and you're like, oh, okay, I like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got. Um, so, I mean, I guess I did do a live. I think this is all about me talking to you and interacting. So, um, I'll, let, let's, let's ask me some, ask me some questions. I'll probably prioritize the ones about the book, but, um, you know, ask me, ask me anything. And, um, I guess I'll, I'll maybe answer it. Um, ba -ba -bum -bum. what's up? Hi, sir. I'm your biggest fan from India. Hello. Greetings. Um, next hair color. Um, I think, I think my next one is going to be back to black. I think I really appreciate being a blonde. I don't think I'm like a, you know, like a crazy hair color guy. Um, I, and I just, I don't think I could do that to my, to my hair. I feel like, 
um, I'm on such the nice with it as uh, already. So I don't want to, I just don't want to keep going. Um, <laughs> what movie is your guilty pleasure? Um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, what was the hardest part of writing a book? It was for me, um, it was all difficult. I think for me, because I, I knowing who I am, I'm such a, an ideas person. I'm not as good at follow through. Um, I'm really great at ideating and uh, creating and coming up with ideas, but it's really hard to like really sit me down and, and see a project through. So I think the hardest part was just finding the time and being accountable every step of the way. And I, and I really credit everybody on my team, whether it was CAA or my managers um, in, in just kind of yeah, keeping me on track and, and on schedule and really just saying, hey, one step at a time, seeming like whenever things got a little too crazy or I started to feel overwhelmed, they were just like, look, just finish the chapter that you have in front of you. What do you need? You know, and, and it was just about like meeting the small goals um, until the big one was was finally, you know, uh, finished. Um, so, yeah, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. You have no idea. Um, you know, we believe so much in the contents of the book and I know like everyone who's read it on my team and even people who are, who haven't been, like I was able to send it to some of my friends to get initial impressions. I mean, everyone's just been so incredibly supportive. Um, what, um, what was something you learned about your parents that you didn't know before? Um, a lot, actually. I know, well, during the, the course of the interviews, I actually learned how I was conceived. So um, that's fun. I don't know if everyone just like knows that story. I don't know if your parents like tell you when you're super young. Um, nobody told me, but it had to do with, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it had to do with KFC. So so <laughs> the night that I was conceived, my, my dad took my mom on a, on a date. Uh, they went to an amusement park that had just opened in Beijing. And, um, and then he took her to a Kentucky Fried Chicken. And um, keep in mind, this was, you know, the late 1980s in Beijing. So, you know, fast food wasn't really a thing. And, and KFC was really the first American franchise that uh, had come over. And so there were like lineups out the door. I mean, imagine, you know, the in and out lines, you know, on any given Tuesday afternoon, like they're crazy. So that's what it was times a bajillion because it was Beijing. And, um, and my parents lined up, waited in line for hours, and then um, spent like what was the equivalent of like a week's salary on a two piece chicken meal and a Coke. And like a macaroni salad and coleslaw. And so I don't, I'll never forget what my dad said. He was like, I was like, how was it? Like, was it everything you wanted it to be? And he was like, yeah, like, yeah, the chicken was good. The coleslaw. He was like, I just thought, I just thought that they were playing a trick on me. Like they were saying like white people eat this in America. Cause he was like, this is one of the worst things I've ever tasted in my entire life. Um, so, um, so that was the night that I was conceived. So my parents, you know, uh, went on a date, went, on a, went to an amusement park, had KFC and coleslaw, and then, uh, and then, and then made me. So, yeah, fun, fun times. Um, I hope you guys liked that story. When you realize you were conceived thanks to KFC, Ig, exactly. Um, do I like KFC? I. I enjoy KFC. I'm maybe enjoying it less now, knowing what I know about it. But, you know, I also think um, it, it probably, you know, in my mind, the KFC of like the 80s tasted better somehow than the KFC of today. Like, you know, I imagine the KFC of today is like so like, it's just mass, pro it's like assembly line cooking. Like I just, you know, maybe I'm, I'm romantic, but like I feel like in the 80s, it was just like a little bit more care. Um, you know, uh, placed placed to, into the cooking of the said chicken. Um, please read the back of your book. I mean this. Um, the back of my book uh, is uh, celebrity quotes, and, and why would I read it to you? Um, 
if you, I want you to, I want you to buy it, you know? Okay, well, I'll read, you know what, you, since you're very nice and you, and you, you know, stuck around for, for as long as you have, I will, I will read, I hope that this means that you will pre-order my book. The link is right here, but, um, here we go. Praise for Simu Liu and We Were Dreamers. Um, so this, this quote is from Ronnie Chang, and he's, Ronnie says, um, great, just what we need, another underdog immigrant story of overachievement. Um, as you can see, very supportive friend, um, very nice things to say. Yeah. Um, the other uh, quote that I have is from a Mr. Ryan Reynolds, who was kind enough to read um, uh, uh, the book and, and lend his, his words. Um, he's obviously such a hero of mine, so um, I hold this quote very strongly in my heart. And uh, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that one for me. And, um, and you're just going to have to uh, pre-order the book to find out what he said. Bam! All right. Official Alan Kim says, Hi, Alan Kim. Oh, my gosh. I'm such a big fan of you, Alan. Um... I hope we get to meet sometime and we get to work together. That would be fantastic. You're awesome. Uh, keep doing great things. I believe in you, and I, I'm sure I'll see you on set in no time. Um, <laughs> Alan Kim is such a cutie. I'm totally down to turn this live into just an Alan Kim love fest. Alan Kim, if you... Um, haven't uh, heard of him already, um, is the incredibly talented actor who plays the son of Steven Yeun's character in um, Minari, which was an incredible film. And um, Alan uh, very famously uh, <laughs> had a, a, an, an amazing acceptance speech, um, one of the greatest of all time, I would, I would uh, dare say. And uh, he's got such a bright future ahead of him. Um, what do you want people to take away from reading the book? That is such a good question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, what do I want people to take away? I mean, there's so many things. I want them to, I want them to know a little bit more about the immigrant experience. I want them to feel a little bit of a stronger connection when they see somebody walking down the street or in line at the supermarket that doesn't look like them or doesn't speak you know, English or their language well. I, I just want there to be not this kind of immediate disconnect of like impatience and indifference. I want there to be compassion of, oh my goodness, you don't, you know, English is not your first language. That must mean that you've overcome tremendous barriers to be here. It's not this idea of like, oh, of course they don't speak English, which, you know, more often than not is, is what happens in our society when people... Um, just don't think about other people, you know, and don't think about anything other than themselves and get just caught up in, in their own world. Um, and then, and then, you know, more universally than that, even, I want people to think critically about the choices that they make in their own lives and, and, you know, realize what makes them tick and, and realize that the drive from within, um, is something that, you, you know, once you have, it's like, you gotta, you gotta go and you gotta act on it. I mean, that's something that I felt when I was, um, you know, when I was laid off from my accounting job and, uh, started, you know, working as a, as an actor, auditioning to be an actor, um, was just this like drive, this like feeling that I was where I needed to be. And I couldn't describe it. I couldn't articulate it to my parents and they were so confused, but, um, but I knew that I just needed to keep going. And, you know, I, I hope the book in some way gives everyone permission to, um, to, to, to unleash that part of themselves, whatever that is, you know? Um, and yeah. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much again for asking it. And I think there's so many more life lessons and just fun experiences and stories that are in there that um, I'd really, really love for you to read. I'm gonna plug it again, I'm sorry. We're gonna do it. Here it is. Look at this, um, I went back and forth with my publisher so many times, picking the right background color. You know, th these things, when they happen at like a, a, a big, massive scale, um, 
you just have you just have teams of people that decide things like this. And um, I like to think that I picked a good one. Um, so yeah, this is this is the book, um, and it's available for pre order right now. So if you've got some time, please um, please consider visiting the link. Consider um, supporting you know, a bookstore near you or a Barnes, you know, a Barnes and Noble or a, or a, um, a Chapters Indigo if you're in Canada. Um, or, you know, if you're, if, you know, you, you, there's no other way of, you know, Amazon as well. I know, but, but yeah, and you know, they're, they are, they are what they are. They're Amazon. They're gonna, they're gonna get theirs. But, um, yeah, I did want to promote the independent bookstores as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I got. All right. Um I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go. Um I do have an early morning tomorrow, but I will say I just I I spent today recording my audiobook for the first time today was day 1 and we had just such an amazing time. Um it's coming out really really well. So yeah, the book will be released on on Audible as well. Although I really like like I love the physical book. I mean, I I understand the appeal of both. Um you know, and, and I am reading every single word, um, which, which is going to take forever, but you know, it's something that I'm, I'm passionate about the book. So, so, you know, I want, I want to do it. And I want my voice to be the one that you hear when you read my story, obviously. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to continue doing that. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much again. Um, I'm going to keep bugging you guys about this. I hope you don't mind. Obviously it's a, you know, it's a big deal that it's releasing. We want to make the New York times bestseller list. So I'm, I'm just going to keep bugging you. Um, but also I hope, I hope you're all well and I hope you have a, a wonderful, um, new year and night and, and all of those things. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm outie. All right, guys, take care. Bye.